Hi, I'm Diana Katich. Welcome to Eve Woman. Now, today we are discussing a very important topic about a case of a 14-year-old who molested a 4-year-old girl. Now, in studio today we have our counseling psychologist. Kindly introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Margaret Mbusiro. I'm a counseling psychologist. I have many years experience of counseling children with uh, offenders and victims of sexual abuse. Now, um, Margaret, we'll get straight to it. What was your reaction when you heard about the 14-year-old child who abused the 4-year-old girl? Oh, okay, when I heard about the, the abuse, of a five-year-old child, a four-year-old four child. Yes. I was uh, I, I was very sorry about what happened. I actually empathize with both the 14-year-old and the four-year-old because uh, both of them are children and they need guidance and they need help. So it is very unfortunate that a 14-year-old uh, uh, actually uh, sexually molests a four-year-old who does not even understand what uh, the act means. Okay, now this uh, four-year-old, how would you tell that um, they have been molested? The child went outside, they went to play, but they're coming back in the house, and how would you tell as a parent? Okay, children, uh, being, uh, children who have been abused, uh, it will depend because I can't say there are signs, there are particular signs that to intend a child has been abused. Each child is uh, unique, children are different, and each one of them behaves differently. So it's upon a parent to actually know uh, the child, the personality of the child, the behavior, what they, how they usually behave. So you're supposed to watch out if. Uh, the sudden uh, change in behavior of the child. For example, uh, the eating habits change. The child lacks appetite, does not want to uh, eat, or uh, your child does not want to play. The, your child wants to stay indoors instead of going to play with the friends outside. Or sometimes your child has uh, uh, problems with sleeping. So it's upon you as a parent to find out uh, to, if, if there are such sudden changes in the behavior of the child. What if the person who perpetrated is living in the house? Yeah, that is very tricky. If the perpetrator is living in your house, uh, you will definitely the child will have a change of behavior. When uh, they start abusing the child, they first of all uh, they, they may threaten the child or they may be very friendly to the child. So if the abuser is in the house, the child may be too close to the child. They may be so close and the child wants to be with that person every time. Or sometimes the child is so scared. When you are around, the child does not want to be with that person, but wants to be with you. They cling so, so much on you other than the other person. Or uh, You'll see there's, there's something that uh, is happening, either too close or too scared or uh, they are too cautious. Okay, now as a parent, how would you make this child to open up and tell you what is going on with them? Okay, if, if you want the child to open up, uh, sometimes sexual abuse is difficult for a child to open up and talk about it. For one, they lack the language, they don't have the language to explain what sex is all about. And again, for us Africans, culturally, it's sex, sex is not uh, culturally acceptable, it. it's not easy to talk about. Mm -hmm. And when it's happening, even it happens in secret. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other person has also promised so many, if you tell mom, you'll be punished, if you tell so and so, I will beat you up, I will kill you, or such, uh, such a thing. So when you are uh, approaching such a topic, it's, uh, you have to be very cautious. First of all, you know your child. If your child is that type, uh, that type that does not talk, you know, there are children who, who are silent, they are introverts. Or there are some who are extroverts and they will talk about it. 
But so if you know your child is an introvert, you calm down. You don't talk. You, you don't approach the topic directly. You have to find a way of being friendly to your child and finding out how you can get the information. You know, Africans were used to beating the child. Yes. Most of the time, if the child is not even talking, we beat the child. Yes. Now, how is that wrong? Cause yeah, that is that is very wrong because when you beat up the child, then you make this child to not to open up. They will close and they will not give you any information because they know you are punishing them for what has happened. And again, when you beat them up, uh, you are victimizing them, and yet they have already been victimized. They are already psychologically psychologically traumatized, and you are adding more trauma into what has happened. So you are actually adding insult into injury. You are not helping the child. So the best thing is to remain calm, be very friendly, because you need to get uh, information, as much information as possible, because at one point you are going to report this matter to the police or you are going to court because of what has happened. So instead of uh, beating up the child, or shouting, or screaming, and, uh, and telling neighbors, it's uh, upon you to remain as calm as possible. Don't harass the child and don't uh, overreact. Okay, in your experience as a counseling psychologist, um, are these cases on the rise or they are just uh, normal? Uh, see, cases of sexual abuse are on the rise. I would not say they are dropping. And uh, uh, currently, children are aware, and parents are aware, and uh, people are reporting these cases of abuse. So they are actually on the rise, and they are happening in our houses, they are happening at school, they are happening in our institutions, and they are on the rise. And there are many cases of abuse reported in our courts today. Okay. Now that the children have closed school, it's now the holiday time, and most of the children are in the house. Um, how would you, as a parent, prevent this from happening to your child? Uh, it may not be easy to prevent this from happening because uh, abusers are everywhere. The children go to neighbors' house where abusers are there. Abusers are in your house. Abusers are in our schools, in the churches. So the best thing to do to your child to prevent abuse is actually to empower them with information. Let your child have as much information as possible about abuse and the type of abuse and how abuse can happen. Tell them that uh, even your closest friend can abuse you. Talk to them about the, their bodies, what to let people see and what they should not let people see. Uh, what you, you call your private part and what is not private and uh, what they should guard, they should uh, protect. So the child should uh, get as much information as possible on how they can protect and how they can tell that someone wants to abuse or someone is abusing. Okay, suppose now um, the parent to the perpetrator, um, how would you tell that your child is the perpetrator here? Like the, your child is the one molesting the four-year-old Okay, the child molesters, uh, 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 the child molesters, children uh, cannot just start molesting other children unless they have learned this behavior, maybe from other older children or from adults. So you will definitely see signs. I, I, as I said, you know the personality of your child, you know the behaviors of your child. So sometimes uh, your child has suddenly started uh, changing in behavior, even in the house, uh, even the way they behave with the house help. Uh, sometimes uh, you see them trying to touch the private parts. They, are, they have interest in the, the sexual uh, parts of a human being. They would even have that, that touch, even with the parent, you find they're getting sexually uh, close, they, are get, they use sexual language. Uh, those are signs that... They confuse that to bonding. Uh, okay, bonding is there. Uh, like uh, it's normal for a child to to to, so, uh, to, 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 to be sexually uh, uh, intimate to maybe the opposite parent, opposite sex parent. 
that is between three and five years, and we call that the Oedipus complex. It happens and it goes, it disappears. But now when it extends after that, then there is a problem. And again, it's a problem when the, this child is, uh, is, is using threats or is, is, is aggressive about sexual uh, behaviors, or forcing other children, uh, touching other children by force and trying to beat and harass them sexually. So there you know that there's a problem. Okay. Yeah. So um, as a parent, what action would you take if your child is the perpetrator? Uh, if your child is the perpetrator as a parent, uh, it's good to uh, get the signs and try to talk to your child. Because the child could be a perpetrator because this child was abused at one point by somebody. And then he learned this behavior and he, wa he wants to practice it on somebody else. So try to find out what, where the origin, what is the origin of this problem? How did it start? And how, why did he start touching? You see, you should not assume when this child is touching the, the, the house girl, touching the other children and trying to force them and uh, using sexual language. Try to find out why are you doing this? Why, oh, talk about it. And then you talk about how, why it is bad to, to do that. It's uh, legally wrong. You can even tell them a story about, like, you're talking about the 14-year-old. Uh, tell them about this 14-year-old, what he did and what happened to him. What are the effects? What is the impact of doing all this? You cannot do that and you escape. And uh, even sexual touch, forcing other children into sexual act or even touching them in a way that is sexually inappropriate is wrong. But find out how it began. It is important to find out where the origin of all this. If they were abused, then you need to refer them to a counselor. They need help. So we should abandon our African ways of beating children and rather talk to them. Yes, talk yeah, them. talking, beating does not help because beating will not uh, deter uh, bad behavior. But talking and helping the children to understand that what they are doing is not right. Yeah. But when you understand where it came from, then it would be easier for you to address it and prevent uh, future uh, bad behavior. In your experience um, as a counseling psychologist, um, do we have cases of sodomy in young children? Maybe a 14-year-old boy molesting a 4-year-old boy. Have you come across such cases? I have come across uh, uh, many cases of uh, children who have been sodomized by other children, or children who have been sodomized uh, by adults. Uh, but they are not as many as the uh, cases of uh, girls who have been sexually abused by adults and other children. And why is that? And, uh, the reason is boys are, uh, okay, boys are boys with the ego, and they don't want to show someone that they have been victims, especially of sexual abuse. And when it comes to matters of sexual abuse, they don't want to look like uh, it has happened to me, I'm weak, it's because I'm weak that it happened. Okay, there's that ego that I, I think uh, contributes to that. But uh, boys reporting sexual abuse is, is very rare. That's why we don't hear of many of such cases. But they do happen, and even parents are embarrassed about them, and they keep quiet, and they don't want to report. Okay. So um, in case somebody has been involved in such um, violent acts of sexual, immorality, sexual molestation, where can they get help? Uh, for those who have been sexually molested, the victims of uh, sexual molestation, uh, first of all, they need to get medical help. So you can get medical help from any health facility. Uh, you can also get medical help from Nairobi Women's Hospital, uh, where you also get a legal document, the medical report that is a legal document that will help you in your case, especially when you take your case to court. So there are also other non-governmental organizations that work with the cases of sexual abuse. For example, we have the Cradle, uh, based in Nairobi. We also have uh, International Justice Mission. We also have uh, the, uh, the police stations. We have the child protection units. 
where you can also get help for such children. You can also call a child helpline to get more information about uh, what to do with a child who has been sexually uh, molested. Okay. Thank you so much for the information you've given us. Well, to our viewers, that is very, very good information which will help someone out there. Thank you for joining us. This has been Eve Woman. Goodbye.